Plastic has become a part of most people's everyday life since it was introduced to us in 1907 with the Bakelite. It rose to popularity in the mid-1940s and now you can find plastic in almost everything. Plastic products may seem like a lifesaver to us as humans, however, it is killing the environment and eventually it'll kill us. Since its introduction, it is estimated that over 5 billion tons of plastic have been produced. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is only the largest example of four other trash gyres in our oceans. Plastic is one of the large polluters that ends up in the Great Pacific Gyre, and anything we can do in our watershed to prevent that from happening is one less piece of plastic going there. To think that we have, what, twice the size of Texas worth of plastic and trash is like completely incredible to me. And there's like five different gyres, so that's just the Pacific Gyre. And, and that's like floating around. There's more plastic than there are microbial life. And um, it's, an, it's incredible. And plastic never breaks down. I mean, it only breaks down. It never, it never decomposes. It's never gonna just be gone. There's no away. Like it just gets down to like, this, like pebble sizes. But it takes like three, 400 years to get down to pebble sizes. Or maybe even a thousand to get down to pebble sizes, depending on what kind of material you have. It also leaches um, different chemicals when the sun hits it. Um, polyethylene terephthalate and when that hits, when that, when the sun rays go through that, it just spreads out all of the chemicals inside of it. Um, and I don't actually personally know the impact of that, but I know that fish are eating it and they're trying to eat it. And there was a whale that recently, the humpback whale that washed up in front of Mexico's coast, um, was full of plastic. And, and it's kind of, it's both ignorant and and it's like the lack of awareness we have in our society and in all of the country in general. In addition to plastic, oil has made its way into our oceans. Through offshore drilling, plastic pollution, natural oil seeps from the ocean floor, and the oil from transportation like cars, buses, planes. Over 1.3 million gallons of petroleum end up in our oceans every year. So the current administration has many uh, proposals to damage a lot of our public lands, including the oceans and our national monuments, and I disagree with the corporate greed. If I had a message to say, it would be allow us to have more environmental jobs. Plastic Tides is a company based out of Santa Cruz, California, that is dedicated to putting a stop to plastic pollution. They combine the education of plastic pollution with paddleboard expeditions where people can help pick up plastic. They host two main expeditions, one in Bermuda and one in upstate New York on the Erie Canal that feature stand-up paddleboarding races and other activities to promote a cleaner ocean. California has banned plastic bags, which is a great start, and a number of city have, have, cities have banned plastic straws, but we still notice a lot of plastics in the storm that come from the storm drains. So we pick up a lot of those materials to prevent them from going into San Francisco Bay. My name is
name's Deb Kramer. I'm the executive director for Keep Coyote Creek Beautiful. Our organization focuses on Coyote Creek in San Jose, and we bring people together to create a vibrant and healthy Coyote Creek fall. Plastics come in a lot of forms. There are plastic straws, styrofoam containers, which are also plastics. Um, so people mostly think of plastics related to food, but we've also found toys and uh, balls and a lot of uh, odd items. So we work with, with the community on three fronts. We help to educate them about the watershed as a whole. We encourage them to get out and enjoy the creek, which is one of the ways that we hopefully get them to come out and keep it clean. So by doing creek cleanups with many community members from university students and high school students and even families, we find that people come together and feel like a community working towards a common goal. Produce at farmers markets are almost always not packaged. Therefore, you are not contributing to plastic pollutions by shopping there. So everything that you're buying at the farmers market is pretty fresh. It's grown in California. Um, and the money you spend here is it's going directly to the farmer, right? There's no middleman. Most of the farmers here are from like Watsonville, Fresno area. Um, so you're not buying anything that's been frozen and transported, you know, 20 states away or whatever. They're not using techniques that would harm their you know uh, Some of these farmers, they're only on a few acres, you know. They're not they're gonna practice sustainable agriculture so that they can continue to grow and not um, you know, not damage their own property and have to, you know, let something sit for a long time before they can reuse it. Farmers markets are an example of one way that anyone can fight against global climate change. Just make sure to bring your reusable bag. Unlike their other expeditions, this local expedition is to promote the pursuit of the plastic-free lifestyle, but also direct attention toward the recent development with offshore drilling and how at the end of the day, more oil means more plastic. This expedition began on Monday, April 23rd, 2018 in the San Lorenzo River mouth in Santa Cruz, California and ended in the Monterey Bay.